There is the proof of sonship. The proof of sonship medically is DNA test. <laughs> The proof of ownership divinely, the proof of ownership, the proof of sonship divinely is the Holy Spirit. The scripture talks about the Holy Spirit being given to us as a seal, as a seal of ownership, as a seal guaranteeing our inheritance. So the Holy Ghost is the authentication, the authenticating code of divine sonship. So if you are in this place and you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you are not moved and led by the Holy Spirit. I didn't say being led by the Spirit or by a Spirit. I didn't say being filled with the Spirit, or with a Spirit. I say being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because when you are filled with bitterness, that's a Spirit. That's a Spirit. So one who is filled with bitterness can say, I am filled with either the Spirit of bitterness or a Spirit among other Spirits. When you are filled with hate and jealousy, you are actually filled with the Holy Spirit. You are likely to be moved by the Spirit. So you can do things. Say, the Spirit led me. Which Spirit? It could be the Spirit of jealousy. It could be the Spirit of competition. When you say, the Spirit led me to begin something. So you begin a project. You begin a business. Begin a venture. You begin a, a ministry. You begin not by the Holy Spirit. You say, I was led by the Spirit. So when we say those things, sometimes naivety will make somebody not hear what is, what is said that is not said explicitly. Yes, something led me. But the point is to find out what specifically, because there are many spirits, endless array and hosts of spirit. You can be filled with the spirit of vengeance. You can be filled with the the vindictiveness and that is a spirit and it moves you to act in a particular way you can be filled with the spirit of um, of competition the spirit of vanity to be like others so you are doing something not on account of conviction that you are in the time of doing that strictly this is a time of doing that Oh, all my mates are doing this. Oh, look at all my mates. You know, listen to somebody. You know, look, all my mates, all my mates. Look at at this age. I was thinking by now I will do this. Yes, at this age you were thinking, but that, now there is something else in front of you. There is the next stone to be rolled away. You face that one. So it's not about doing something. Not what is in front of you. Not what is needful. Not what is necessary. Not what life demands of you right now as a matter of importance and urgency. But you are trying to do something else that will make you rank at par with those you call your equal, your contemporary, your mates. Look at my mates are doing this and doing this so that I, so I, I don't have to waste my time. So you go and play in a field that is not your own. A spirit let you or the spirit of competition, the spirit of rivalry, the spirit of vanity, the spirit of pressure, peer pressure to belong, to belong. So many people whose children are languishing abroad, out there, because their parents sent them, not because that was the most important and urgent thing in front of them, all my mates, all the everybody in our circle, their children are outside the country. So it don't need to me. It is not my own children that will not leave the country. You see, it, at every point in time, it is important to descend. So when we're talking about sonship, sonship specifically, and firstborn status specifically is about the seal of the spirit. Shout hallelujah. For because we are sons,
hands, he has sent into our hearts the spirit of the Son. This is so important. He has sent into our heart the spirit of the Son because we are Son. He sent into our hearts the spirit of the Son. The spirit of the Son. And the spirit of the Son comes to do something. Do something that only the Son does. To say, Abba, Father, Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So, issue of firstborn status. If I may use the word firstbornship, issue of divine sonship, issue of having God as Father is not religion, is not church, is not that my Father is a church founder, is not that we were brought up in church, we have always been in church, is not that oh we have known the Lord right from when we were little, we were taught of the ways of the Lord. Is about the spirit. You can have the way of a church, the way of your father's church, and think that is the way of the Lord as it is understood by you. But when it comes to the Holy Ghost, that is divine and universal. So when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you step into an arena where people are filled with the Holy Ghost, you speak the commonality in language of those filled feel with the Holy Ghost. When I say the spirit of commonality, or the, the, you know, speaking commonality, speaking a common language, or you will say, oh, speaking in tongues. Oh, these days people teach people how to speak in tongues. Whatever you utter that is not, not, is not even, um, you don't understand it and others don't understand it, it passes for a tongue. But when I'm talking about commonality, is the agreement of the spirit and fellowship. The kindred spirits that believers have the same mind, the same attitude, the same focus on the Lord, the same attention on the Lord, the same obsession with the kingdom and the rulership of God, the same, the same, the same passion that consumes you on account of the affairs of the Lord. To fulfill the claim of the Father. That is the commonality of sonship. That is what all sons find in common. That sons talk about the affairs of their father. Sons are obsessed with the household of the father. Sons are worried and bothered by the throne of their father. What is going on? Either right or not right. So if you are speaking your need all the time and everything that has to do with God is about your need, I just want to let you know one thing. You are not son. You are a slave in the household. Slaves think of what to eat. That's what makes the distinction between slaves and sons. Sons are bothered about the household because that's their inheritance. The estate of the father. Slaves think of what they can take from the estate of the father. Like plantain in the land of the father. A son is not bothered about plantain. The son is bothered about plantain insofar as it is on the land, the estate of the father. So the obsession of the son is the estate of the father, the affairs of the father, the issues of the throne of the father. That is a little test that you can run on yourself right now. What obsesses you in God? What troubles you in God? What consumes you in God? What bothers you in God? What delights you in God? What makes you joyful in God? What gladdens your heart in God? If, if things are going wrong in the kingdom, in the affairs of the Father, and it does not cause you to mourn, it does not cause you to lament, it does not cause you pain, it does not cause you sleep in the night. If you see that people are coming into the Lord, right after that they go back to what they had forsaken, that people taken from drugs go back right, go right back to drugs and all of that, and you don't see it because you, you have not left anywhere. You don't belong to the, the household of the Father. So issues of souls, salvation of souls, 
issues of outreach, how we take the gospel to others. As long as we just gather and it's about us being healed and God heals us. It's about us having favor and God favors us. It's about us in marriage, in this. I mean, this is our little children, take now. Tekna, the word tekna, plural form of technon in Greek, is little children. The connection between technon and uios, uios is son in Greek, but techno is child. The connection between two of them is fatherhood. The father is the father of the father is the father of the child, and the father is the father of the son. A child does not know anything except the sucking of finger, taking everything to the mouth. Have you seen little children? The only way they relate with reality is the mouth. Absolutely. You didn't, you didn't know about that. I know about it. I've had experience with four little, <laughs> four babies. So I am holding my baby and he wants to, to show me love. He wants to continue bring the whole of my head into his hand and put it in his mouth. So I say, we don't eat father's head. It doesn't work like that. But that's the only way. Whatever, give him something. He, everything. So that's how you know some people are not slaves. Oh, they're actually born again. 20 years later, they have not gone beyond three months old status in the Lord. Everything in one month. When I mean in one, it's not literal in one. <laughs> just eating something that has to do with the gratification of you the satisfaction of you a child ah, is not bothered just give sand to a child he eats it give gravel to a child he eats it everything and so there are many people with their own Christianity. If it is not about what they consume, consume emotionally, consume financially, consume maritally, consume professionally, consume officially, politically. If it is not about their consumption, nothing but everything can fall apart insofar as it does not touch what they eat. That is the techno experience in the Lord. A child of God that has not gone beyond the mouth. What about sons? They are the ones who take care of the estate. They are trusted. They are the ones who go to war. Sad. Children don't go to war. Sons go to war. They are the ones who fight for the inheritance of the father. They are the ones who see things not going right. And they make a vow to the Lord. Nobody knows about it. Lord, just let the next deal come through. Lord, let me let this opening just come through. I'll take away this reproach. Lord, just just let this let let this come through. And they make covenant on in the lost side without anybody having to know, without them meeting anybody to pray for them, because they have a relationship with their father. And they know the work of their father is not about the work of that man or that woman. It's not about who recognizes them. So you see some people in church, they stay in church 10 years, 5 years, they are strangers. Because nobody has come to meet them over something. They have capacity to change the game in different areas. They don't feel obliged, obligated to make any difference. Why? Maybe they are not recognized. They don't know my importance. Who told you it's about them? It's not they recognizing your importance. It's about who you are before God. So this issue of talking about sonship, it is beyond coming, coming to just talk some beautiful scriptures. It is a life. It is a culture. It is a passion. It is a destiny. It is a purpose. Will you rise to your feet? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Fill me with the spirit of the son. And cause my spirit to cry out, Abba. Cause my job to cry out, Abba. Cause my emotion to cry out, Abba. Cause my, my life to cry out, Abba. Lord, say, fill me with the spirit of the son. And cause my life to respond to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
sincerely, be, be serious. I could just stay here and do, and do a whole Sunday message, a whole service message. Do you? I have, I have said this before. Just, just to say this in passing before we go into the main meat of the Word of God today. And this is so important. This is so important. Let's look at that scripture again. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. So one of the subject matters to be addressed in this passage is fear. But that's not my interest. But you received the spirit of adoption. There are, there are different ways. Let's talk about two basic ways by which people become sons. By which people are begotten. Two basic ways. There's the biological way. And there is the legal way. The legal way and the biological way, they have just one thing in common. The law covers them. They are covered by law, recognized by the institution of heaven and the institution of the earth. Adoption is the other way by which people are born, by which people are begotten, by which people take on the fatherhood of one. Adoption. Adoption. So in Christ Jesus, our manner of being begotten by God is not biological, for it is written, God is spirit. John chapter 4. And those who will worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth. So our being begotten, that's why you can sit down here and you just like, when, you know, the issue of God as father is so distant. Why is this distant? The absence of the operation of the spirit. That's it. It's not doctrine. You can have all the doctrinal rightness in your head about being a child of God. But God doesn't exist. God is a figment of imagination. It's just something that is made up and created like the Marxists will say. Created by the bourgeoisies by the bourgeois to oppress the masses. And they say religion is the opium of the people. Why? People like Karl Marx, they did not re react against God. Karl Marx reacted against the believers of his time. <laughs> it will surprise you that in my philosophical studies, I wrote on Karl Marx. <laughs> Crazy, right? <laughs> That's 20 something years ago. <laughs> so, those, these men, they said there was no God, and they brought about a theistic philosophy, Marxism, that swept across the world. And transmuted into communism and that is still at work now making making cuba a nightmare to the united states of america a little island called cuba because of the philosophy because of that russia has an ally and it can bring in a submarine with missiles that will threaten the united states just in front in the other side is the united states of america but these guys did not do it because they did not know God. And those who knew God did not give them opportunity to know God. So there are fathers who do not give children opportunity to know God. And children grow up radical and wild. And they say there is no God. They say all this God thing is nonsense. It's because it is religion in your head. Being a child of God as religion. Look at that scripture. He said... The spirit of adoption. So it is by the spirit you are adopted into sonship. And as a proof that you have been adopted, the spirit cries. Pay attention to the cries of the spirit. The spirit of God does not cry, my food. The spirit of God does not cry, my marriage. The spirit of God, you wake up in the morning, does, as you sit before God, does not cry, reminding you how old you are and you are not married. How old you are, you don't have children. That's not what the spirit of God cries. The spirit of God does not cry, you don't have the house yet. My house builder. My giver. That's not the concern of the spirit. That's not the concern of sonship. That's not the mode of adoption. That 
is not what adoption in God is about. For the Gentiles, those who do not have God, this is what they seek. This is what they, they use in defining their connection with God. But the Spirit cries out, Who? Abba, the affairs of my father. The work of my father. The burden of my father. The government of my father. That's what the Spirit, so the proof of sonship is that you wake up in the morning. It is about the father. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday in any of our services, Rising Stars Assembly by 7 a.m. and Champions Family Assembly by 9 a.m. Earth Live on Planet 101.1 FM and Spectrum TV at 10 a.m. Every Thursday for World Power Encounter by 5 p.m. Venue Goshen, Kilometer 14, Wangiba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaibom State. Join our live streaming on Facebook, YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and on the Christ Radio app. You can become a part of this great revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For partnership, please call 0907-383-8742. For prayers, counseling and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0803-671-5303. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.